Officially, this style of beer doesn't even exist. But this could all just be a simulation and none of us might exist. <laughs> The beer style I'm talking about is a Midwest IPA. It's incredibly delicious, and in this video, I'm going to let you in on the secret of how it's made, and to prove that it's good, I'm gonna take a few cans of this all the way to London, England, to see what a couple of award-winning craft beer documentarians think of it, which I'm actually a bit worried about, because I know for a fact that one of them drinks beer for breakfast, and the other one happens to be a certified beer judge. But here's what they don't know. I actually have a few tricks up my sleeve and I use them to make this beer off the charts delicious. One of the tricks is a brand new top secret method for boosting hop aroma that to date, probably less than 1% of homebrewers have even heard of, let alone used. A Midwest IPA theoretically combines the traits of two of the world's most popular IPA styles, the American West Coast and the East Coast Hazy. Out of the gates, this beer explodes with New World Hop Aroma, but it also packs a ton of old-fashioned bitterness. It's got a lot of great malt character and the finish is clean and dry. Full recipe details are on our website, but for the record I used Golden Promise Base Malt Crystal 10 Vienna and Munich, which were all double crushed in one of our mills. I mashed for 45 minutes at 152 degrees Fahrenheit in our 10 and a half gallon brewing kettle. I boiled for 30 minutes using our 240 volt controller and added 13 total ounces of Cascade, Simcoe, Mosaic, and Citra over the course of that boil. I also used two hop salads for this recipe for better hop utilization. After that, I chilled and added WLP 60, which is the American ale yeast made by White Labs. During fermentation, I added another five ounces of hops, mostly Simcoe, but I actually didn't stop there. The first thing I did was that I added a hop aroma oil near the end of fermentation. What I landed on was Azaka aroma oil. The second thing that I did, and I might be the only person in the entire world who has put this in beer, and I'm not joking, um, but the second thing I did was that I used a thiol boosting enzyme made by a company called Lafort, called Lafasm Thiol, which is designed to boost the aroma of white wine by boosting thiols. What are thiols? I have no idea, but they're important for wine and beer aroma as well. After fermentation was finished, I cold crashed, carbonated, and canned the beer. I wasn't able to purge the cans with CO2, but I did make sure to cap on foam to reduce the exposure to oxygen. I then vacuum sealed and packed the cans in my suitcase using only my best underwear as padding. Then I flew 4,000 miles across the Atlantic Ocean before touching down in London, England. I never been there before and was absolutely blown away by how cool the city is and you know I drank some cask beer before hopping on the tube and heading up to the Caps and Taps bottle shop to meet Brad and Johnny. This is Johnny, this is Brad, we're gonna drink this beer and they're gonna tell you what they think. Am I gonna do the honors? Uh, please. Yeah. So um, you can't, you can this as well, Carl. I've yet brewed it, canned Amazing. it. Yeah, I'm very, very nervous about this. This is the first time a certified beer judge or two, are you as No, well? I'm by no means a certified okay. beer judge. I'm just an enthusiast. I like that. You're my man. You're my man on this one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll put you back. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, before we drink it, it's like uh, New World hops, bitter, um, should be pretty dank. Uh, use Simcoe, Mosaic, Citra, a lot of Simcoe actually. And, uh, but I use an American Ale yeast which uh, should give a, like a crisp, dry finish, but it's also gonna be a bit hazy, hence so the haze. Kind of mountain style, like somewhere between the coasts. Exactly, right. my, my idea was like a Midwest IPA, um, middle of the coasts. Okay, well let's dive into it. Cheers. 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 Cheers, welcome to the UK. Yeah. Ooh. You've done something right yeah, with the aroma, for with, sure. I'm happy with how it smells, yeah. for sure. It's, it's a lot of information coming at you. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. You can sort of get like fleshy kind of stone fruits. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, is there kind of a, like a tannic white wine kind of grape acidity to it? There's also little hints of like more savory kind of pine and stuff like that. There's yeah. just, 
everything going on. If you'd handed that to me, I'd have said it was a fruity yeast, but I guess that's sure. coming from a mix of the foils, of the Azaka oil, mm -hmm. maybe the Simcoe was a really fruity pick, mm -hmm. and then obviously, you know, mosaic yeah. is going to bring that yeah. rotten fruit kind of thing to um, it. Yeah, hop, hop during the boil and a fair amount of dry hops as well. Wow. So, it smells great. Yeah, see, I was expecting like a New England profile of like silky mouth body. Mouth body. There you go, there's a phrase for you. Uh, smooth, smooth like silky mouth feel, yeah. but it's crisp and dry. Big old bitterness at the finish. And yeah, slightly drying on the tongue, like a, a little tannin. It has got that fusion thing, hasn't it? The sort of mountain style where it's bringing... It hasn't, it hasn't quite got the, the, yeah, the sort of like smooth mouth feel of a New England, but, it, but it's, it's got the sort of... Basically, it looks like a Nipa, right? Sure. So I was yeah. expecting it to be sweet uh -huh. and have that sort of thick yep. body, kind of like silky mouthfeel, but it's got like a bitterness, a bit more like a West Coast. So it is definitely a fusion. Hmm. It's come together, right? It's kind of British in a way in that it, it feels very pintable. Yeah. Whereas the, the New England style is, is almost the opposite of that. You get too this sickly, is, can't they? Yeah, exactly. And this, you get the really sweet, full on aroma, but it's really lovely and dry. It's well made. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. It smells fantastic as well. It tastes fantastic, but like particularly smells yeah. amazing. I mean, I think it worked. We, yeah. You know, this yeah. is one of the best, most aromatic beers we've made, um, I would say. We need to get some sure. laughgasm, Brad. Laughgasm. <laughs> is it laughgasm? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I made that up, even though you said it a couple of minutes ago. Uh, if that's not what it's called, that should be what it's called. <laughs> it was Phantasm, was the original uh, Antipodean Fanta one, I think. Phantasm, Fant uh, Phantasm uh, powder. Uh, Which yeah. is what I call... Uh... <laughs> okay, Bradley. I'm going to, for legal reasons, stop you there. Um, Laughasm. 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 Laughasm file. So designed to boost the aroma of wine. Okay. Uh, You've done it here with beer. I love it. Just tossed it in the beer as on a whim. And then brought it to you guys. Seal of approval right there. Beautiful, Beautiful beer. Yeah. Beautiful beer. Cool. Thank you. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. No worries. Thanks. Cool. Check out their channel, Craft Beer Channel. We'll put some links somewhere on the screen here. Oh man, not again. Hey Emmett, I'm gonna need you to order another body double.